Type coercion is one last idea for implementing generic functions. Some types can be converted into other types, which takes advantage of the structures in the type system. So this doesn't mean that we're going to subclass and base class everything. All it means is that there are relationships between types that we can define via functions. So for instance, I could define a function that converts a rational number to a complex number. How do I do that? Well, I just return a complex number that has no imaginary component, and the real component is the numerator divided by the denominator of rational x. And then I could create coercions, which is a dictionary that tells me how to convert rational numbers into complex numbers, or any other conversions that might exist in my arithmetic system. And here I have a function to do the work, rational to complex. So you might wonder, can any numeric type be coerced into any other? Well, the answer is no. So an imaginary number just can't be turned into a rational number because then you just lose the imaginary component entirely, which means you've basically lost a key part of the number. Now, there are some more subtle issues such as uh, two and a half, the number that's a floating point, can't really be coerced into an integer because then you lose the fractional component. And an integer that's too large sometimes can't be converted into a float because there is a maximum size of a float, whereas integers can be as large as we want. So there are various issues that arise when we try to coerce one numeric type into another. Nonetheless, we can coerce a rational number into a complex number, at least most of the time, by writing this function here, which does the work. Second question, have we been repeating ourselves with data-directed programming? And if so, how can we clean that up? I would argue that we have, because this particular expression, numer divided by denom, showed up in both the add and the multiplication functions that were cross-typed. So how can we not repeat ourselves by having a more concise implementation? Well, we can use type coercion. So here's applying operators with type coercion. We'll first attempt to coerce the arguments that come in to apply into two values of the same type. And then we can apply type-specific, not cross-type, operations. So here's an implementation. We define coerce apply, we pass in the operator name, we pass in two arguments x and y. So this has the same signature as apply in data-directed programming and it's gonna behave in a similar way, except that it will attempt type coercion. So we'll get the two types for X and Y, which we'll call TX and TY. And then if they're not the same, we have to do some work. What kind of work can we do? Well, we can see if the pair TX, TY is in coercions. So in the coercion dictionary that I defined on the last slide, there was a coercion from a rational, RAT, to the complex number, COM at which point we can replace the type and the value of x by the type of y and whatever we get by calling that coercion function on x. So if x was a rational number, now it's a complex number, really representing the same value but with a different type, and tx would become now, as opposed to indicating that it's a rational number. So the reason we change tx is just so that we know that we've converted x to a complex number. What if it's the other way around? TY, TX is in coercion, so that means whatever type TY is can be coerced into TX. Well, then we'll actually do that work by calling the appropriate coercion. Otherwise, we'll declare that we're stuck, no coercion possible. It should be the case at this point that TX is TY. These two values are the same type, at which point all we need to do is worry about what operator we're interested in, such as addition or multiplication, and then we only have one type, the type shared by both x and y. Then we can look up the implementation for that key and call it on x and y. Whew, that's a mouthful. Let's look at a demonstration. So here's the code, just as I showed you before, the rational to complex, the coercion from rational to a complex number 
is keyed by this pair of types. So let's imagine what happens when we call coerce apply on x. We have a complex number x and a rational number y. So tx is going to be com, ty is red. Those things are not equal. We can't con coerce a complex number into a rational number, but we can coerce a rational number into a complex number. When we do that, we replace y, which was this rational number three halves, with a complex number of equivalent value. Okay, so now x and y are both complex numbers. We assert that that's true, that they're both the same type, which they should be at this point. We create a key into this dictionary core supply implementations, and then we look up the function value for that key and call it on x and y, which are both complex numbers. So the key would be add, because that's what we passed in in the first place, and then the type com, and adding complex numbers means we call add complex. So if we run the doc test on this file, we see that this passes correctly. That in fact, adding together one and a half represented in two different ways gives us the number three. And the number of implementations that we had here is fewer than before, when we had eight different apply implementations. So what's the advantage of type coercion? Well, it gives us minimal violations of abstraction barriers, just as we saw before. We define cross-type coercion as necessary. It requires that all types can be coerced into some common type in order to apply the operations that we're interested in. So the restrictions on when we can use this are stronger, but when we can use it, then we don't repeat ourselves as much. There's just more sharing. All operators use the same coercion scheme, and so we don't have to define how to convert a rational number into a real number as part of every cross-type operation, which is great. So it's as if I took this big table, which contains all of the different operations, and instead split it up into two smaller tables, how to coerce from one type to another, and then how to add or multiply two values of the same type, which just gives me fewer functions to implement overall.